Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for yet another episode of the uh, Jupiter 2 model build. So I just have a little update here of something I've done previously. I have here these little uh, 3D printed housings for the Millennium Falcon. These are actually extras of the uh, hazard lights that go underneath the Falcon. And I have gone and I have cut out some of the uh, sections inside the light. You can see my two little ones on the left here how they've got bigger holes in them than the ones on the right. I cut out every other uh, section in there, whatever you want to call it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out this little part of this dome here on the underside of the Jupiter 2 and I'm going to put some uh, lighting in there. So ultimately I ended up getting up to a 532nd inch drill bit which is the size of the uh, housing and as you can see the housing fits right inside the hole there. So I've gone and I've glued the housing in place. I've painted it with the same silver as the rest of the underside of the ship. And then on the top side where the little hole is, I am using a uh, 0603 SMD LED. And I'm just going to mount an LED over each section and voila, there we have a uh, landing gear light. So I did this on all three of the landing gear. Um, then I have the fibers running to the little door locks inside the uh, landing gear. And there you've got the door lock light and the landing gear light. Next update I've got the uh, Compu Translator here. And in the later seasons in this section here, it actually had a yellow light in there. So I've made this little light box. I put two SMD warm white LEDs in there with a little orange gel to give it more of a yellowish glow. Um, can't really tell there, but then I put a piece of paper to diffuse it, finished up my light box with another side piece, and then I glued that in place over it, and I'm just gonna have it shine straight through the plastic. Here's how it looks when it turns on. With the warm LEDs and the gel in there, it gives it a yellow look, so that looks pretty cool. And next up with it, we have the reels here, which I would like to make rotate. So I've drilled out the center of these. I have this photo etch piece here, which I'm going to put on the outside of these and have those spin with a rod that I'm going to have go through the holes I cut out going into the photo etch here. So I have another motor here, like the one I used in the main console. And I have all these gears, and I think these little ones over here are what I'm going to use to make these spin. I've decided on these gears. I have here my one millimeter brass tubing, which will fit in the center of the uh, photo etch and go through this 3 32nd inch tubing I have and then I'll have the gear on the back side to make it all spin. And I'll just rotate around like so. And attach to that one and attach to this one. So I've painted the photo etch yellow with a little black ring in the center. And I have epoxied my tubing to the photo etch pieces. And I've got those assembled here. Both of them are ready to go and epoxied in place. It's a nice, strong, secure fit. And at this point I'm going to take my photo etch reels and I'm just going to fit them through the holes into the Compu Translator. With those in place in the back side I'm going to put my 3 32nd inch styrene tubing over the brass tubes. And I have epoxied the styrene tubes in place now holding the uh, brass tubes nice and straight. Then I'm going to take my little gears here and place them over the tubing and glue those to my tubing which I've done here again with a little bit of epoxy. And then I glued in this third gear below with tubing and when that one rotates it rotates the other two and makes the reels spin. 
I've gone and I've made a little styrene base for my motor here and the motor will fit right underneath and lock into place into this gear here. And now I've gone and I've glued the motor in place and it's nice and secure. And I've also made this little styrene piece here to hold this gear on so it doesn't slide off the tubing. So this gear is going to run off the motor and then I've attached some wires to the motor. And here we have it operating and it all seems to be working just fine. This is my very first attempt at doing gears and motors. But uh, it works pretty good and I'm happy with how it's turned out. And here it is with the light. So moving along we have the astrogator parts here. And they all go together like so, I'll give you a little idea of what this is supposed to look like. And there you've got the uh, astrogator, is the way it's supposed to look. And then you also have this little control panel here with the little joystick which attaches to the underside of the center disc here. So I've got all my astrogator pieces here. And first thing I'm going to deal with is this little guy here. And you notice these little bumps around it. Those are supposed to be lights. So I'm going to use this half millimeter fiber optic and I'm going to drill those out and try to light those up. So I'm going to drill holes through there and trench it on the underside, bend the fiber in and try to run the fiber through the center. I've drilled out all the holes so that the half millimeter fiber will fit through there. And then I'm going to go through and on the underside I'm going to trench it out deep enough for the half millimeter fiber to fit inside the trench so it's pretty much invisible. And this is a little mini Jupiter 2 saucer which attaches to the top side of this disc. And this all this whole assembly goes like so. And that's a little saucer, but that little uh, stem in the middle of the rod is too thick. Um, that is not accurate to the size. And I have this one millimeter brass rod here, which I'm going to replace that with. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut this off here. And now that I've removed that, I'm just going to drill into the saucer just a tad, enough for the uh, half millimeter rod to fit inside there securely and snug. And you can see I've got my rod in there, and it's a lot more accurate looking having the little thin rod as opposed to that thick piece. And then what I've done here on the disc is the little piece of plastic that I cut off from the saucer here that was attached to the saucer. I cut off a little sliver of it, inserted it inside the disc, um, glued it in place, and then I drilled out a hole for my brass tubing to fit inside of so it fits nice and snug through there to hold the saucer. I also cut a chunk of it off and put it in the center of this disc so that when this is placed on top it'll keep it centered and it won't move around. And then I've drilled a hole here for my fibers to run through. So I've gone and I've primed all the pieces with Tamiya Fine White Primer. And this, I have cut out a big hole in the bottom for the fiber optics and anything else I may need to run through into the base of the uh, Jupiter 2 floor. And that bottom fits to this lower portion of the astrogator like so. And you can see how there's a big area there for all my parts to fit inside of. So here I'm starting to put my fibers into the disc and bend them and run them into the little trenches I've cut out. And I've just kind of dog-eared my fibers as you can see here. And then I'm just pushing them inside my drilled out holes and the bend is running into my little trenches. So I've got all six of my fibers run bundled up into the center of the disc. And I've gone and I've painted this with the uh, Vallejo Green Sky paint. And I've also painted the fibers on the underside to conceal them a little bit. And then I've gone and I've painted this saucer with my uh, brass tube, the Tamiya Mica Silver, 
which is the same silver I painted the uh, exterior of the Jupiter 2 with. And I've gone and I've painted this portion with Tamiya flat black. And then what I'm going to do is I'm taking this Humbrol mask all and I've painted it all over the top side of this piece that I painted black because the outer edge I want to paint brass. And I have gone and I've airbrushed the Vallejo brass paint all around the outer edge. And then I'm just going to use this toothpick here and I'm going to pull off the Humbrol mask all that I had placed on there uh, to reveal my black paint underneath. And then I've just taken some flat aluminum and just dry brushed it a little bit over all the raised areas to highlight it and give it some texture and depth. And I've painted this disc with flat aluminum all over the top. And then I'm going to take this bottle cap from one of my paints and place it directly in the center like so. I'm painting around the outer edge trying to do a two-tone and I've painted around the outer edge with Tamiya medium gray so that when I pull my cap off I've got a little bit of a two-tone going on there and then you can see when I put my other piece in the center there there's like a metallic ring there So this is the bottom, which I have painted wooden deck tan, the bottom of the uh, astrogator. And then I have taped off this portion here because I'm going to paint the rest of it with the Vallejo sand primer. So there you've got the wooden deck tan and Vallejo sand primer two-tone. Then along the very bottom edge I have masked off again and along the very bottom edge I'm going to paint that with a flat aluminum just to give it a little rim here like you see right here. Just adding some nice texture to it. The rest of it I have painted with the uh, Vallejo sand primer as you can see here. The majority of the astrogator is the sand primer color. And now I've taped off here and on the underside of the middle section I am going to paint right inside these areas here with flat aluminum. Um, again just giving it some texture giving it this metallic ring around it and here I pulled all the tape off and you can see my ring around the underside. Then these little fins here I'm going to paint with my Tamiya wooden deck tan all around to again give it some more texture and depth and just make it look kind of cool. So here we have our little control panel and I would like to light this up as well. And we have these little photo etch pieces here and these photo etch pieces go on either side as you can see right here. So I have gone and I've cut out an area here for light to shine through into the little holes of this photo etch pieces. And there's an empty space on the underside here where I plan on putting an SMD LED inside to light up those two holes that I've cut out. So my plan is to light up these two holes with the SMD in the center here. I'm going to cut a little trench and run it into the center of the uh, astrogator. So I'm going to trench it, put a little hole to go through, and then trench into here, cut some notches so that it'll run into the center. And uh, I have to drill a hole and trench this side of the piece to go through because it's, I don't want the wire to be seen. So then it'll come through the center here and I don't want it to get pinched by this piece so I'm going to have to notch out the little rings on the inside so that it can get in there. So here we have a little trench that I did for the wires of this uh, SMD LED to go inside of. Then they come through a hole into the other side and again I've done a little trench for the wires to go inside of. And then the LED will illuminate both of those holes and I'll cover it with a piece of styrene. So I've glued the uh, SMD in place here 
and I've cut out a little sheet of styrene, painted the top side black that'll fit right over like so. Then over the black I've painted it the same color wooden deck tan to match the rest of the uh, control panel and I've painted the inside of the hole with black for light blocking. And I've also notched out in the ring here for my wires to go through so they won't get pinched. And here you can see when I attach power, you can see the LED shining through my holes that I've cut out. And uh, this hole in the center here is where the joystick control will go and it'll cover that light. So I painted my two photo etch pieces with flat aluminum here. And I have now glued those in place and I've painted the uh, joystick with flat aluminum also with a little flat black ring. And here you can see how they look when they're lit up. And I did paint the back side of the photo etch a couple of them with my Tamiya clear blue. So after discussing with my client, we've decided to use four decals rather than seven and just do four areas to keep it less busy looking. And the four decals have been put in place here and I painted this little knob here which goes over the control panel. And here's my control panel in place and you can see the wires from the SMD running into the center. And then with the uh, other portion glued in place, the wires come out through here. And then what I've done is like my other pieces, everything runs to this little circuit board here. And I've got an LED here for my fibers to go in. And then I have a pigtail to power everything up. Now this disc around the outer edge has this calibrating ring decal which goes around it that I have to put in place right now. So I've gone and I've put the calibrating ring decal on and I've now put this disc in place on the astrogator. Then I've got my upper section with the brass ring and the disc with fibers and I'm going to now run my fibers through the holes here in the bottom into the astrogator. I'm just going to run those through They'll come out the bottom. And now I've got the whole top portion in place with my little saucer also put in place. And now I just have to put my very bottom portion onto the astrogator. So I'm just going to run this over the fibers and my wires and all. And here we have the entire astrogator assembled except for the clear plastic dome which goes over the top. And I'll be placing that on last just so I don't get it scratched up. And here is the astrogator mounted on the floor and plugged in fully working. I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. The little lights on top of that disc underneath the Jupiter saucer. I like the way those turned out. And uh, the control panel looks very nice as well. No light leaking or anything like that. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. So anyway, that does it for this episode of the Jupiter 2 model build. Um, so I hope you'll be joining me on my next video. So until next time, thanks a lot. Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.